are we in a recession? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, I know everyone on Twitter's flinging poo at each other, whether it's a recession or not, and the government stepping in. But basically, two quarters of negative GDP, not good. Usually that's given a 100% chance of a recession. Uh, we haven't had confirmation yet from things like the ISM survey, the Institute of Supply Manager survey. That usually drops to about 47. I'm expecting that in the next month or two. Um, and then we'll be definitely there. So we're there or thereabouts. Um, it feels that way. The markets have traded that way. We're seeing job cuts coming. You know, we're seeing a lot of evidence and even the bond market's starting to tell us that. So it feels that the recession is here. According to data from the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, the United States economy has contracted for six consecutive months. During the first quarter of the year, the U.S. GDP declined by 1.6%. Data released on Thursday also showed a 0.9% negative growth for the U.S. economy. Two consecutive negative growth quarters is the traditional definition of a recession. But the Joe Biden administration believes the U.S. economy has not slipped into a period of economic decline. Last week, during an interview with CNBC, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said over 400,000 jobs are still being created monthly. As such, she believes this couldn't be a recession. The Biden administration also stated that significant economic gains have been made since the COVID-era shutdowns. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. The president announced to the country on Thursday just after the BEA released the GDP data. But many economic and financial experts believe otherwise. In a recent interview, Real Vision CEO Raul Pal explains why he believes this is a recession and what the next few months will look like for the world's leading economy. The Macro Bureau also speaks about useful indicators that investors can examine to get a reasonable understanding of the macro environment. One of these indicators is the ISM Manufacturing Index or Purchasing Managers Index, a monthly indicator of U.S. economic activity based on a survey of purchasing managers at more than 300 manufacturing firms. It is considered to be a key indicator of the state of the U.S. economy. Here is what Raul Powell has to say about this important economic indicator and the current macro environment in the United States. The thing that gives you the best guide is something called the ISM survey. And you can Google it, you can find it, it's publicly available. And that basically, anything above 50, the economy's expanding. Anything below 50, it's kind of stalling. And anything below 47 is a recession. And that's been going since about 1947. It's an incredibly good indicator and really useful. So think of it as a kind of weekly version of GDP. So yep. that gives you a very quick ballpark. And what's really interesting that no economists figure out, and I don't understand this, is it goes up and down. It's cyclical, right? right. Economists have linear projections. It's like, really? Yeah. You can show a small child a chart of GDP and they go, well, it goes up and down. So what it does, if you see it going down and crossing 50, you know we're likely to be headed into a weak patch or a recession. Mm -hmm. um, if it's coming up from the lows, we can start looking forwards. So that's a really simple guide. The other way is the bond market's usually very good at this. So once yields start falling, bond markets are generally derive their price action from two things, GDP growth and future inflation. So if bond yields are rallying, it's saying that GDP is probably slowing down, i.e. Okay. there's a chance of stimulus to come and bonds look a safe haven. And secondly, that inflation is likely to come down in the future. So yep. those two things alone give you pretty much all you ever need to know. Now, what's really interesting, the, the second degree of all of that is there's a bit of magic. So you look at this ISM survey, you go, well, how does it help me with my equity allocation right. or my allocation? All you do is to turn it into a year-on-year -year chart. And all of the year-on-year -year charts of every asset, from oil to bonds to commodities um, to you know, copper to equities to emerging markets to credit spreads, are all the same chart. They're driven by the business cycle. And some things are pricing in more right now, and others are pricing in less. So the bond market's pricing in less, as is the oil market. But things like tech stocks a pricing in an ISM of 35, which is a deep recession. So then it gives you kind of a relative understanding of, okay, where should I be looking at allocating my money? So there's some rel relatively simple tools. In his interview, Raul Powell also talks about how indicators like the ISM and business cycle indicators impact asset prices. According to him, during moments of economic downturns, such as this, investors move away from discretionary stocks to utility stocks, which tend to perform much better. Let's get back to Powell's interview as he speaks more about the current state of the markets. 
If you weren't yet to do so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more crypto-related videos. You can also drop your comments and observations about Pal's interview in the comment section below. Yeah, I mean, does technical analysis lead to price action or does it not? All I know is if you listen to Stan Druckermiller over the last 20 years, every time he gives an interview, he says, you know where the economy is by looking at the internals of the stock market. What does he mean? It means things like consumer discretionary stocks versus utilities. If the economy is slowing, then discretionary stocks, i.e. the discretionary spending, tends to fall. Utilities are the things we have to have, so they tend to do well. They're all correlated with the business cycle. The business cycle, I mean, I've got business cycle indicators going back to 1870. They still work. So mm -hmm. even though more people might, might look at them over time, I still don't think it's necessarily the driver of price action. If not, you would have seen more assets price in the same move. But we haven't, right? We've got bonds right. up here, haven't priced in much of a weakening ISM. And then we've got tech stocks, which are at the bottom, which are priced in a massive amount of weakening. So hmm. it's clearly not efficient yet. Now, the question is here is more complicated because we've got these supply issues. We've got, you know, onshoring. Yep. We've got other things that are muddying the equation. And what we've got is this big debate. So myself, David Rosenberg, and, and maybe Urian and a few others kind of think we probably mean revert because of debt, demographics, yep. technology, that inflation is not a long-term issue. But there's a whole other group who I really respect who are saying, no, you're dead wrong. Inflation's sticky. It's here to say it's a big problem. Yep. And we won't know. And this is the beauty of financial markets, right? It's game on now. We've got the right. game. We place our bets and we'll find out who's right and who's wrong. Elon Musk tweeted out yesterday, somebody who'd been talking about the inflation in his supply chains right. and said, we're seeing prices peak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he is a consumer of a lot of different raw materials. That's right. And he's telling us this. And we're seeing that all over the place. So, okay. So why does inflation, why is it at 9% now? Well, inflation is a lagging indicator. It looks back over prices. So, so still we're seeing some companies pushing through price increases of commodities that they bought six months ago that they've turned into cereal boxes that they've now put on the shelves, right? So it's a delayed process. And yep. eventually the delay comes the other way. The other big delay is rents because the right. housing market is slow to move. It's not like equity markets that can you know, move very quickly. So the, as the housing market comes down and mortgage rates come down, rents will slowly come down, but that can take a while. And it's the same with wages. So we're now just starting to see all the tech companies laying off people, all the crypto companies laying off people. So that's going to be pretty broad-based and pervasive. It's not gigantic because oil companies are doing well and other people are doing well, but that process then feeds through. So usually what happens is 18 months later, 12 to 18 months later, yeah. you get the reverse. And I actually think we go to negative inflation, which is not what anybody else thinks. Right. Raul Pal is not the only one that believes we are in a recession. In a recent interview with CNBC, ARK Invest's Kathy Wood also shared similar sentiments. Yet the Biden administration insists that we are not in a recession. What do you think? Is this just a ploy for the Democrats to save face before the midterms? Or is this just a temporary thing that cannot be termed as a full-blown recession? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video and subscribe for more crypto-related content. Thanks for watching.